Hello there. Welcome to the CBT Nuggets training series entitled CompTIA Strata IT for Sales. I'm Tim Warner and I'm happy and grateful to be your instructor. Our agenda for this introductory nugget is as follows. I'm going to teach you about the Strata program. What is CompTIA? What is Strata? How does it fit into the IT marketplace? And why would you want to consider becoming Strata certified? We'll then dive into how I constructed this course. Of course, I constructed this course, <laughs> if, if you pardon the alliteration there, to help you pass the Strata exam. But I also want to make sure to set expectations so you know before you invest a significant amount of time sitting through these nuggets that you are, in fact, in the correct program. Third and finally, I'll give you some practical advice with regard to tackling the FC0 TS1 exam. This is the CompTIA exam ID for the Strata IT for Sales certification. Without any further ado, let's continue. About the Strata certificate program. If you've never heard of CompTIA, you probably should. CompTIA is a nonprofit trade association that was created in 1982. They've been around for almost 30 years now, actually. Many original equipment manufacturers or OEMs belong to CompTIA, a lot of other high profile technology companies. Even individuals and private organizations can join CompTIA. Joining CompTIA as an individual can convey certain benefits, like giving you some exam discounts and giving you community access to other CompTIA members. That stuff can be worth its weight in gold. Incidentally, CompTIA stands for Computing Technology Industry Association. And what they're known for is a portfolio of vendor-neutral IT certification programs. Now, the vendor-neutral part is important. Depending upon where you're coming from, and I assume nothing, by the way, in terms of your current background in information technology, but many of the top IT hardware and software vendors in the world, vendors like Microsoft, Cisco, Apple, etc., maintain their own certification programs that give IT professionals, developers, database administrators, all these folks, the ability to demonstrate their competency. CompTIA is nice because they're not tied to a particular vendor. If you take a Microsoft Windows XP configuration exam, you can rest assured that you won't be asked questions about non-Microsoft hardware and software. Similarly, if you're studying for the Cisco CSENT or CCNA certifications, everything on those exams is all Cisco all the time. The Strata program is really the most elementary or fundamental of CompTIA's certification portfolio. Typically, before Strata came along, Newcomers to the IT industry, whether these are folks who actually are IT folks or prospective IT folks, or our audience for this course, salespeople who are in an IT context, folks who are selling information technology goods and services, would go for another CompTIA title, like the A-plus Certified Computer Hardware Technician, or the Network Plus Certified Network Technician, and even still, the third most popular CompTIA certification in their portfolio is called Security Plus. This is a vendor-neutral certification on information security. As a matter of fact, these three credentials, I do happen to hold all three of these, by the way, have actually been certified by ANSI, the American National Standards Institute. That happened in April 2007. So for CompTIA to get ANSI accredited on these credentials speaks volumes on how highly they're valued in the world. Now, as of this recording in mid-2010, Strata is really, really new. It doesn't have all that high of a profile yet, but we in the industry feel nothing but good things about it. Strata program has three disciplines. There's the IT Fundamentals Certificate, the Green IT Certificate, and then what we're concerned with, IT for Sales. IT Fundamentals, I like to define as an A-plus ultralight. I have a feeling that this particular curriculum is going to see most of its use actually in the secondary school market, in high schools, where teachers want to instruct folks who may be interested in entering the information technology field to give them a good grounding in how IT works. Green IT refers to environmentally sustainable computing in information technology. Now more than ever, the notion of sustainable resources, energy conservation, etc., recycling, 
is very much front and center. So green IT is on the cutting edge of that. There is a strata certificate for that skill set. And then finally, what we're concerned with in this course is the strata IT for sales certificate. And the basic candidate for this credential is going to be a new or even experienced salesperson whose sales product or products deal with either directly or even indirectly with information technology. For instance, you might work for Cisco selling access control devices. How can you be a really effective salesperson, especially when you're making presentations to prospective clients who are IT professionals, unless you can speak their language? You see what I mean? That's where the IT for sales credential really has its money, its bang for the buck, to help train salespeople understand the language, the nomenclature of information technology, and thus make you a much more effective salesperson in your job. Now, down at the bottom, we see a blurb that I've culled from the CompTIA.org website. This is CompTIA's official description of their IT for sales credential. The CompTIA strata for IT sales exams designed to show that the successful candidate has the knowledge to effectively engage a customer, identify types of technology users, coordinate with technical staff, ensure customer satisfaction, and provide appropriate solutions based on customer requirements, including green IT and preventative maintenance. Therefore, in a sense, the IT for sales may be the most challenging strata certificate to go for, because as you'll see in just a moment, the content outline or blueprint for IT for sales embraces topics from both the IT fundamentals skill set as well as the green IT one. So certainly a hearty congratulations is in order for you to be pursuing this credential. Good for you. If you visit the CompTIA.org website, you can read all about the Strata program and in particular read detail on the CompTIA Strata IT for Sales, which is what we're doing right now. The exam ID to remember again is FC0TS1. And what you're looking at right now is the blueprint or the exam objectives. This is a document that's freely downloadable from CompTIA, as I said. And what we're going to do here is go past the domain breakdown. I'm going to discuss this separately in just a moment and just kind of breeze through the content outline. CompTIA is known for being really specific in their exam blueprints. I mean, this document goes for eight pages. I'll just slowly go through. First, we have technology and computer hardware basics, basic IT vocabulary, monitors, internal and external storage solutions, peripheral devices. It just seems to go on. And at first blush, you might think, wow, this is a lot of material. It actually is a lot of material. But at this level, we're more concerned with breadth than depth. We want to have a certain baseline level of proficiency with these terms and concepts, but it's really getting them all in your brain, functioning together in a cohesive way. Then over time, you'll gradually begin to deepen your mastery of these individual subcomponents of the outline. Here we have our green IT and preventative maintenance section. And as is the case in many CompTIA skill sets, they not only give you the hard technical skills, but also what are called the soft skills. In this case, we have sales and communication skills. There's actually quite a bit to do there. And then at the end of the roadmap, CompTIA will almost always give you a list of acronyms. These are going to be initialisms or acronyms, and then they spell them out for you. By the end of this training, you will have gained familiarity with every single one of the acronyms in this list. Now, if we come back to the whiteboard here, how I constructed this course for you, and this is how I construct all CBT Nuggets courses for my students, actually, is that I build my Nugget outline. As you see, there's 21 Nuggets or 21 videos in this product, and I've modeled the structure and even naming of these Nuggets in strict accordance with that outline that we just looked at. So we're, of course, in Nugget 1 right now, and then in the next Nugget, we're going to start right in with hardware basics, networking, internal and external storage solutions, peripheral devices. We just looked at those in the outline. Therefore, the take-home message is I want you to rest assured that you're going to get 100% end-to-end coverage of every item on the CompTIA's published roadmap for this exam. We're not leaving anything out, in other words. And as an instructor, I feel very strongly about cohesion and flow. So therefore, we're going to be building our skills. We could draw the metaphor in a number of different ways. We could think of a snowball rolling downhill and gradually getting larger. We could look at it mathematically, the traditional learning curve, 
where your skill set is on one axis and time is on the other. And as you invest time, your skill gradually starts to pick up and then it really ramps up quickly once you start combining these bits of knowledge into a cohesive web. Therefore, one cogent question is, should you just pick and choose these nuggets and watch them in any order, or should you try to watch them in sequence? I have to tell you this, friends, just between you and me. I've constructed these nuggets to be cumulative, so I would strongly recommend you watch the nuggets one after the other, because these are really dense nuggets that are absolutely packed with information, and many times will review concepts. For instance, you'll notice that some of these nuggets are in pairs, part one and part two. We'll do some review in part two of what we covered in part one. And then maybe later in the course, we may do a little review and cross-referencing to stuff that took place way earlier in the course. You know what I mean? So if you're just picking and choosing, bada bing, bada boom, through these nuggets, you won't benefit from that cohesion and that flow that I've put in. Now, of course, you can do whatever you want. I'm just giving you best practice suggestions from the course developer's point of view. Finally, let's look at practical tips for passing the FC0 TS1 IT for Sales exam. If you've taken other certification exams, you'll immediately notice that the price point for the strata exams is a lot better than what you get in other situations. I mean, even within CompTIA's own portfolio, if you want to earn the a computer hardware and software specialist credential, that requires two exams. Each one is at least $200. So you're spending several hundred bucks for one title. Other vendor-specific certification programs can also rack up the money. Microsoft has held their exam price at $125 dollars per attempt for quite a while. But then again, if you want a premium Microsoft certification, that may involve two, three, four, or more exams. So multiply 125 by four, and you've got yourself again a significant investment. Maybe this price will go up as more and more people become strata certified. I actually don't know if this is introductory pricing or if CompTIA plans to keep the price point low. But as of this recording in mid-2010, if you're not a member of CompTIA, it's $99 per attempt. If you are a member of CompTIA, there is a yearly subscription fee to be a CompTIA member, by the way. You get a $20 discount and you pay $79. You register to take your exam online, or you could do it via telephone if you wanted to, although it's much more convenient to do it online, with either of the two major IT certification exam registrars. Those are Pearson View and Prometric. Prometric.com, PearsonView.com. Easy enough. Although, frankly, it's easier to go directly to the CompTIA page in either one of these registrars. You can do that. Just do a Google search, Pearson View Strata, Prometric CompTIA Strata, and that'll take you directly to CompTIA's homepage within either Pearson View or Prometric. And what you do during that registration process is you create an account. If you don't already have one, that's free. You pay your registration fee. That's to be expected. And most importantly, you pick a date, time, and location to take your exam. It is hoped that you have either a VIEW or a Prometric authorized testing center within walking or a short drive from your home. You may have to travel a little bit farther out, depending. And you'll be able to see the availability of those centers. It's pretty nice the way these websites are set up. And you simply schedule yourself a slot. The specifics of the exam are that it's a traditional computer-based multiple choice exam, and I'm not giving away any non-disclosure agreement or NDA information here. This is all freely available information from the CompTIA.org website. The exam consists of 70 questions in which you're required to answer them all, or at least attempt to answer them all, in 60 minutes. So you can do the math here. You have a little under a minute per question. The pass mark is 70%. Now, CompTIA exams historically are viewed as, quote, easier than vendor-specific exams like Microsoft, Cisco, Apple, and so on. And the reason for that, and I've talked to a lot of folks about this situation, a lot of folks who have some really intense expertise with certification, and we all seem to agree that whereas some other vendor-specific certification programs, it almost seems like their exams are written to fail you. CompTIA exams seem to be written just for the opposite reason. There's a sense that CompTIA wants you to pass the exam. You'll find that the questions almost universally are on the simpler side. You, there won't be these huge scenarios, generally speaking. And they will should be, in most cases, a fairly obvious answer. You won't run into any rabbit holes. Microsoft, for instance, was notorious in their Windows Server 2003 MCP exams 
for giving terribly difficult questions, where if you weren't reading every single word in the question and parsing every word in the question, the answer choices rather, you were liable to get that question marked incorrect. Here though, it's a different thing. It's a kinder, gentler certification program. Anyway, very bottom of this whiteboard, I've reproduced the table from that PDF document we looked at a few minutes ago, the blueprint for the course. Another thing about CompTIA, besides giving you detailed outlines, you can pretty much bet the farm, so to speak, that the breakdown you see in their blueprint is exactly what you're going to see on the live test. In other words, domain one is technology and computer hardware basics, and it looks like a little under 50% of the exam is from that skill set. So 70 questions, you can rest assured that approximately 35 or let's say 34 questions are going to come from that portion of the outline. And then you'll notice that the remaining three domains, compatibility issues, software compliance, green IT, preventative maintenance, and then your soft skills, each one of those representatively has a much smaller percentage. But you can actually do the division and multiplication if you want to figure out approximately or in some cases exactly how many questions from each domain you can expect on your live test. I've always really respected CompTIA for being so transparent about that. Alrighty then, let's revisit our agenda and then we'll get on with the training proper. In this introductory nugget, I told you all about CompTIA and the Strata program, and I hope that you now have fastened your seatbelts, put on your thinking caps, and you're ready to lock in for a really insightful, informative, and I dare say, enjoyable ride. I hope you don't mind dry humor and puns, because that's a large part of how I teach. (laughs) <laughs> Second, we looked at how th- this course works, how I constructed this course to ensure full coverage with the exam objectives. And then third, I gave you some heads up information on the FC0 TS1 IT for Sales exam, how to register, how much it costs, how many questions. You should be really excited, I hope, excited like I am, to get through this material, master it, have fun doing it, and then, of course, the culmination, go out and pass this exam and earn your certification. You deserve it. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.